we are going to begin with waking state practices and these practices will be divided into two parts the first is attention practice and the second is awareness practice you already have a little bit of attention in the waking state and you already have a little bit of awareness in the waking state if you do not know what is awareness you need to go and listen to the whole series again i am going to repeat that when we talk about awareness we have already discussed a little bit about attention but i am going to give you a little bit of detail about what it is so before that we can define a few things anything that can be delineated from its environment will be called an object it can be a physical object it can be body or the parts of the body it can be sensations of the body or various mental activities the activities of the layers we have the ability to distinguish between one perception and another perception we can form concepts around those perceptions and we can tell the differences we can combine different perceptions into one consistent experience and we can call it an object it can be anything but it will be always a set of perceptions if you think that is too difficult to understand you can take some examples for example a tomato is an object because you can differentiate a tomato from the surrounding environment it is not a plate it is not the table it is not the wall it is something which stands on its own and therefore it is an object but if you take a closer look at tomato you will find different components of perception there there is one thing called color you can separate out the color from the object itself and then the color becomes one object you can see the shape and the shape becomes another component of that object another kind of perception and there are so many like touch and smell and taste etc so there can be more aspects to tomato like the beauty or ugliness or different uh, projections on tomato such as it is good for health and it is, it is very tasty it is a source of my happiness and th- there are so many concepts that can be attached to this one object so an object is really a complex set of names and forms similarly you have body which is a very complex object it is not really one thing if you pay close attention it is a set of perceptions and similarly all the higher layers which we usually call as the mind non physical layers they are all perceptions of different kinds but the, some of the perceptions can be grouped together because they occur together or they are intimately related and we call it an object so a thought is an object an emotion is an object an imagination is an object and your whole dream is an object so these are the examples of objects an object is nothing but a specific experience so now we can define attention as restricting the experience to a specific object or restricting the experience to a set of objects you can include more objects in the experience and this is also called concentration when you concentrate on a specific object or a set of objects a particular name and form then this ability is called attention so attention is an ability we all have this ability more or less in the waking state our attention is on a particular set of perceptions only so you don't need to invoke the more general definition of attention that i gave earlier we have already discussed the dimensions of attention which are the direction of attention and the range of attention and the span of attention the direction of attention is towards the object which is being experienced you can change the direction of the attention and the different objects they come in view the range of attention is including more objects in the current experience allowing more objects more forms more names so the more you include the greater will be the range of the attention it becomes spread out it becomes wider because there are more things in the experience now similarly you can narrow it down to only one particular perception one particular delineation for example in the case of tomato you can see the whole tomato as one experience 
or you can narrow it down your attention to its form its color its shape and its taste and all those things its internal constitutions how many seeds are there how they are arranged and so on so you will find that actually there is no tomato it's all just a set of perceptions so more perceptions are included in that attention the wider it becomes and uh, a new dimension is now being introduced which is a temporal dimension it is the attention span it is the duration of the time for which the attention is held in a particular direction in a particular range so you can hold that attention on one object for a small duration like a few seconds or you can also extend it to many hours if required this is the attention span we are going to use all three dimensions while practicing that attention there will be two kinds of attentions that we are going to speak about which i already told you right now the first kind is the inclusive attention where we include many objects of our, our interest in the experience and the second kind will be the exclusive attention where we exclude everything except only one object that becomes our only experience we have this ability to either include or to exclude objects out of our experience it is like magic it is like a super power there are two steps of attention practices the first is in posture we sit down comfortably and we practice that attention we try to master that attention in its various forms and the second step is in daily life in your day to day living why do we we have two steps just like when you want to perform on stage you practice at home or you practice behind the curtains you do a rehearsal of the drama or your performance you want the performance to be flawless similarly you are going to play a match and before the match you do some kind of practice alone in an environment where there are no big challenges you're playing with your friend and there is no pressure on you to win you are just practicing you are just sharpening your skill similarly when uh, trying to master your att- attention you need to do it in two steps in the first step you reduce your challenges to a bare minimum that is an artificial setting and you try it out you try to master it in that comfortable setting in the comfort of, of your room and in the second second step you apply that mastery in your daily life i have seen there is a trend in people in the seekers that they do this in room practices for many hours but as soon as they come out of the room in their daily life everything is forgotten they do not apply this art to their daily life and it is like doing the rehearsal day and night and that not performing on the stage or practicing in the net with your coach and then not playing the game there is no point in doing that similarly when you sit in a posture and attend to something you will need to apply that mastery that you have gained over attention in the daily life otherwise there is no point in that so when i say in posture we are reducing all the challenges to a bare minimum and we are using tools and devices in whatever we can to master this art to practice this and then in the second step we use it in the daily life we do the same practice in the daily life where there where it is more challenging where there are more disturbances and distractions and uh, you will find that you are good in your room but you fail miserably outside your room when you are interacting with people and doing the daily struggle of the life so that means you are not carrying these practices into your real life so before we go into in posture practices we need to first reduce the challenges that is you need to be able to comfortably direct your attention and play with its range and you need to increase your attention span to the maximum possible and you will find that directing the attention is not a big problem even changing its range including or excluding objects not a big problem but the attention span is a very big problem you will get distracted very quickly either you will get bored or you get tired or you lose interest 
or somebody comes and disturbs you there are more important things to do now and that is a big cause of failure so let's see how to increase the attention span so that you can begin the in posture practices a bit of will power is required to keep that tension on and you will find that uh, it is soon captured by something else if your will is not strong enough it will hop from one object to another one experience to another like a bird it does not stay still the amount of time that you can give to one experience continuously is called that tension span and this is a big problem these days some people have a longer attention span and some people have next to nothing for example little kids they are always distracted probably there are surveys that you will find online that will tell you what is the average attention span in each age group and you will be surprised to see that it is few seconds or few minutes that's all you will find that movies are made keeping this in mind that the viewer of the movie is not going to attend to the scene for more than these many seconds so they need to cut the scene and present something new on the screen so that interest is maintained and they and the viewer do not switch channels do not fall asleep and the more distracting you make those, those things there is a better chance of success which means more money so a lot of studies ha- have been done about the attention span and it was found that if the attention span is not long enough nothing is learned the skills are not mastered no memory can be retained the intelligence does not grow the person does not does not develop into a mature adult and the person is highly impulsive compulsive zombie robot all this because of poor attention span so that day i told you that the attention is the most beneficial ability to master and now you can understand why <laughs> our whole life depends on how how much can we attend to something with this exercises it is going to increase naturally so i am not going to give uh, too much importance here to the attention span because it will come naturally with the exercises but uh, there are some tips here if you want to proceed without uh, too many obstacles if you want to be launched smoothly into the world of practices here are some tricks to increase your attention span by usual means by normal means free yourself from distractions the modern life is full of distractions if the person is not distracted for more than a minute he feels incomplete he feels dead many people are just addicted to distractions of different kinds so there are many many things that will attract your attention you need to get rid of all of them if you are practicing if you are always in some kind of hurry which the so called modern and civilized man always is it looks like they are all anxious it looks like the sky is about to fall they want everything the next minute if your attitude is like this it simply means that there is no there is a lack of attention your attention span is zero this will look like anxiety and confusion so you need to fix it if there are lots of disturbances your job involves continuous phone calls or you are disturbed by one or the other thing then just like distractions you need to get rid of these disturbances minimize everything adopt a minimalist lifestyle get rid of all the disturbances anything which is not useful for your long term goals is either a distraction or a disturbance and the biggest disturbances are people get rid of unnecessary people interact with them only when absolutely necessary keep the interactions brief and to the point if you have bad habits tendencies that always push you to do something like every 5 minutes you need to go away, go to the kitchen and eat something then obviously it's a serious problem and that means your attention span is not going to increase these habits and tendencies they are not going to let you sit for even 2 minutes if you have addictions like smoking or drinking or talking on phone gossiping or you need to be distracted by something for entertainment every 2 minutes then your attention span will be lowly if you are impatient if you want everything today then you won't be able to attend 
to anything because some things especially in this field of philosophy and spirituality they manifest after many years and yes you heard it correctly not days or months many years and it requires a superhuman patience if you are in doubt whether i qualify for these practices or not go and check the episode number 3 where i've described the qualities of a seeker you must cultivate all those qualities otherwise these practices are going to produce no result or some something bad can happen that's why i said that these are for intermediate or advanced seekers not for beginners if there is too much happening in your life there are too many events that you need to attend to then your attention span will suffer so keep your to do list very very small and before doing all those these practices you should finish off all the work although that will be taken care of when you start doing the awareness practices which can happen with the work you can work with that attention and you can pay attention to all the events that happen but if you think that events are distractions then get them out of the way and then you will be able to do something useful with the exercise before you choose the objects of attention you need to be able to sit for long hours in a comfortable pose this is also called the posture you can choose any posture of your choice the only thing you need to see is that your back is straight and your neck is balanced and you are alert and there are no distractions as i said your bodily needs are met and nobody is going to disturb you for a few hours some of the exercises will be done live in your daily life but uh, to reach that level the seeker needs to practice alone sometimes sometimes the attention is so bad that cannot be employed directly in the life and so you need to do an intense practice when you're not facing the life when you're not active in the society and in the world and for that some practices in a sitting posture are recommended the problem is some people cannot sit for even 2 minutes peacefully and that is again because of too many impulses too many compulsions too many distractions and uh, impatience or sometimes the body is not fit enough to sit for long hours especially in the old people so it is absolutely necessary that you practice a proper posture before you start any exercise you will find that if you are not able to sit then all these practices will be pointless they produce no result and we are going to do that in a step by step manner it is not compulsory to sit for 3 or 4 hours straight on your very first day we start from few minutes so the question is how to sit then you choose your pose if you are used to sitting cross legged yes you do that if you sit on a chair most comfortably you sit on a chair if you want a support for your back you get a support for your back a pillow or something to keep the back straight if you need to do some fitness exercises to achieve that kind of strength to sit with the unsupported back then you do it fix your body but the point is to sit in a very very comfortable posture for the required duration of the practice if you are not in a comfortable pose then your attention will be taken up by the body all kinds of pains and discomforts will arise in the body within 2 minutes and then you won't be able to practice attention because your attention will be demanded by the body it is not only the body if there are too many activities going on if there are too many mental activities they also produce tiredness and anxiety and impatience they won't let you sit so you will find that it is extremely difficult you will know this on your very first day and many people give up the practices here because they are not able to even sit for some time so how much time should you spend sitting just practicing the posture and the answer is very simple that you sit for as long as you are comfortable otherwise you get up otherwise you don't do these practices and uh, yes with practice the posture will become stable will it will become comfortable and the duration is going to increase we are going to make sure that it does happen if it does not 
even after an year of practice you do not see any improvement in posture and um, in uh, sitting durations that means something is wrong so once you get into a comfortable posture and you are able to sit there for a few minutes without any distractions and anxiety then uh, focus your attention you can focus your attention on three kinds of objects the first is external which is any object in the world it can be a flower it can be a statue it can be a picture it can be a tree a plant photo of your favorite guru photo of your favorite deity whatever you find very very pleasing or you take a plain boring object or something shiny like a candle and gaze on it you can also take a blank paper and draw a point on it the point should be big enough so that you can watch it from a distance a few meters or you can face a blank wall and if there is nothing on the wall it's it's kind of too boring so you draw something on it you draw a point on it or draw an image on it and make it your object of attention if uh, that is not possible for some reason then you use sound use a bell use a singing bowl or utter some words which is called the mantra spoken words they should be loud and clear the only thing that you should uh, take care is that these objects are not ugly they should not be obscene they should not be too loud and they should not change too much like you cannot gaze on a movie <laughs> it cannot become your object of attention the point here is to not to deviate from your object and if it is pleasing if it is beautiful the mind will naturally want to stay there or if it is not to distracting like plain and simple like a triangle or a circle then you can have even better attention because now the food for the mind is taken away and now only attention remains the supporting wheels are taken away if it is changing it should change in a repetitive way just like the mantra or just like the candle the flame dances in a similar way some people are used to meditate or attend on music there is something about the music that grabs the attention you should take care that nobody is singing especially the highly emotionally charged poetry something very very exciting and violent that kind of music should be avoided the music should be repetitive very very pleasing it can have a mantra or something which repeats it in if it is meaningless much better now you will find that if you gaze continuously on an object like this something external to you you will become peaceful suddenly and you will lose the awareness of your body also so nothing to worry that is what it means to pay attention to something external keep your gaze on and you can blink normally there is no point in damaging your eyes or something do not gaze on something too bright like sun or the led lamps or something like this the exercises are meant to increase your attention not your stupidity so if that happens that you lose all awareness of everything except that object it is a good sign only thing you need to take care of is that don't fall asleep don't go into trance be alert be amazed by your attention some people will say should i think here or should i stop thinking well that is coming you can think whatever you want right now your attention will should be taken up by the object so you will find the thoughts also decrease naturally because you have given a direction to the mind all other activities will become diminished and if that is not happening that means your attention is flickering you are not interested in that object at all you find it very very boring and you are waiting for your timer to go off you are pushing it you are getting tortured by this practice it should become a pleasure for you you should be highly curious about what you are looking at it does not mean that you start asking questions 100 questions like a little baby you watch it very very curiously that's all don't let your attention wander that is the whole point once you master this kind of external attention you can shift to the intermediate kind of attention where you do not focus on an external object you re- you withdraw your focus from everything external and you focus 
on something in your body. The most natural thing to focus on is the breathing. Watch your breath coming and going. Do not try to control it. There is no point in controlling it. Yes, if it is too fast or if it's too slow, if you are choking, if you are not comfortably breathing because of some odd posture or you are too tired or you just ran a marathon and now it's your practice time. So that's not a good time to practice. Your breath should be very, very natural and breathe naturally as usual. If you are used to breathing from stomach, you should do that. The diaphragm breathing. If you think, no, I need to breathe from my chest, you do that. The, the point is to attend, not to manipulate the breathing. Whatever your body is doing is absolutely perfect already. There is no need to mess there. Unless your guru told you to manipulate the breathing, don't do it. This is the path of knowledge. We do not do all these things. Just watch it. Just pay attention to it. There is something very amazing, beautiful about the breathing that you cannot see it. And so it is. it presents an extra challenge to you. The external object keeps you anchored, keeps you tied to itself. If you slip, you have something to go back to. The breath cannot be seen and therefore it is very easy to slip. It can only be felt. Only a little bit of it can be felt. So that is an extra challenge there. You need to pay more attention. And that is what we want, isn't it? We want more attention. We want more concentration. So the breath is a very good way to achieve it. And another good thing about breathing is that it is always with you. You don't need to go and search for an object. You don't need to worry whether it is pleasing, whether it is beautiful, whether I am interested in that or not. The breath is always with you and you are always interested in it. Is there anybody who is not interested in breathing? You can also um, pay attention to any pleasant sensation in the body. Yes, if you are just starting and you are practicing postures only, then you will find that the whole of your body is painful. Nothing pleasant going on in your body. But if you have mastered the posture or you are just sitting in your uh, chair comfortably and attentively. You can simply touch your forefinger, the first finger and thumb and you will find that this touch is very very pleasing. And you think no it is not so pleasing. <laughs> it is a pleasure compared to all the pains in the body that you get when you practice posture. It is very very pleasing and again it is very subtle. It is so tiny that you are presented with a challenge there. Touch the fingers and thumbs of both of your hands. Rest your hands comfortably on any support or on your thighs and just pay attention to that sensation of touch. And you should take care that you, because you are touching many things, your body is touching many things, don't let the attention wander from anything to anything else. Accept this one touch. And if you master this, you will find something amazing that is happening in your body. And we call them the energies. You will find there are tingling sensations all over the body. They are extremely pleasant. You found them out right now because for the first time in your life, your attention is minute enough to notice it. Remember, ordinary people do not notice all these things. They don't even know they are breathing. The distraction is too much. So if your attention has become so minute in the intermediate state here, you will start noticing tiny movements in the body. Don't worry what they are. Probably they are flow of blood. Probably they are, they are just noise in the nervous system. Or probably they are some internal activity of the body. Who knows? You will start noticing it everywhere in the body and you just pay attention to those energies. Why do we call them energies? That is totally another story because there are traditions that are developed around these sensations. There is a reason. So if you want to call them as sensations, yes, go ahead. The names don't matter here. But you will find there are many such flows in the body and you need to choose something. And it is recommended that you start from the feet and then go upwards. Till you reach head where you can jump inside. How to jump inside? Take your attention into the internal activities. From external to intermediate. And from intermediate to internal, you need to do it in these steps. 
because probably a newcomer will not be able to suddenly directly attend to the internal activities by internal i mean the relatively higher layers higher than your body or nervous system or different energies and sensations pleasure and pain so the next higher thing is emotions obviously pay attention to all the emotions that are arising and if possible hold a very subtle pleasing emotion now you must have heard it now you know all the light bulbs are going on in your in your mind suddenly oh yes my guru told me yes they do it in that tradition in that, this tradition the most pleasant emotion to hold is of love if you love something somebody bring in that emotion and don't hold on to the memory or the object of love hold on to the emotion it it is very subtle it is tiny it is almost transparent you won't be able to see it and that presents even a bigger challenge to the attention ability of attending now your attention is going to become even more minute refined and sharp like a tiny needle hold on to this pleasant emotion and if something else comes up which will happen initially because <laughs> our lives are totally impure so yes all kinds of emotions are going on normally we don't pay attention normally we keep acting on them so here you will get a little bit of control if you attend to it instead of acting on it right now we are not worried about control so much it's going to come later you must have seen that by now you have a good amount of control on your own body which could not even sit for few minutes you are commanding that body don't worry this is not going to happen on first day or even on first week first month no it takes time once you master this pleasant emotions or you pay attention to whatever is coming there you can jump to thinking which is another activity you will find that it's always going on it's always there no matter if you pay attention or not the thinking is going on in the waking state now you bring your attention on what you're thinking don't try to stop it and don't try to t- turn it into something pleasing see whatever there is like a very curious scientist observing something under a microscope he wants to study this these things in their natural environment like zoologist who is observing the birds or animals in their natural environment he is not messing with them he hides somewhere and then observes the behavior you do something similar watch all thoughts come and go including these thoughts that probably i am not attending probably i need to increase the duration probably my attention is very bad watch all of that and here you can if your teacher has given you recite a mantra which should not be done with your mouth it should not be loud it should be mental if you have taken that path of mantras the mantra will become mental anyway here it will internalize and now it will continue on its own like a song that gets stuck in your head and continues on its own the mantra is going to continue on its own you need to simply remember it once and then it goes on and on and on mechanically so there is probably a lot of boredom there and so you are challenged even more to follow this mental chant that will sharpen your attention even more and when you master that you take up imagination or visualization that is the final thing probably you will need to master imagine something pleasant visualize something very very pleasing but not very loud and obscene not very violent it should be very simple and very beautiful like lotus for example like moon like a star or you you can even visualize somebody's face face of your child or but there is a danger that it, it evokes emotions and you don't want that when you are attending to visualization you the emotions are a distraction for you when you are trying to imagine something the thinking or the mantra or the breathing they are all distractions for you you have left them long ago in your practice so visualize anything that you prefer a garden a tree a big temple clouds a lake seashore and so on and do not uh, visualize anything which is uh, too artificial mechanical or that immediately gives rise to the lower tendencies such as food or naked women so you need to be careful here a little bit i don't even need to tell you that but so i went through this like um, a hurricane like very very quickly but uh, you will find that in order to arrive at imagination 
from the gazing on external objects probably it will take many months probably 6 or 7 months have passed so what i recommend is you form a um, regime you form um, sequence of practice in which you take up these objects one by one on the same day so you start with something external after 5 minutes you switch to intermediate and after 5 minutes you, su- you switch to internal that will be total 15 minutes of paying the attention and if you want you can go on increasing the duration of all these three so these were the objects of attention that you need to practice on and they correspond to the three familiar types of experiences experiences of the world of uh, the body and of the mind which is a simpler way of saying that these are three categories of the layers of the memory you can uh, refine your attention to each layer that you know of and that is how we know all these layers because we paid attention to various activities while uh, doing the visualization or imagination you need to keep one thing in mind which according to my experience will help you is that do not recall a memory of your past when you want to imagine or visualize do not try to attend to a memory of your past because it is going to be a big distraction the nature of the memory recall is such that it will recall the whole train of events once the train begins there is no end to it and if you try to do that you will find that uh, you are sitting in posture for half an hour and 20 minutes were simply wasted because you were drowned in the memories of different kinds so always take a fresh object in your vis- visualization always imagine something which is not a part of your past it should be here and now and present not linked to all the good or bad memories the similarly when you are concentrating on the body parts body sensations do not uh, focus on anything that is painful the pain will grow the pain if it looks like an ant is going to become a become an elephant if you pay attention to it so the first thing you should do is uh, um, cure the pain and then practice and if it is not possible do not focus on that area in the body where there is pain for example if you have breathing trouble do not focus on breathing so that is why i said that these practices are for healthy people if you have fears phobias and uh, pains of different kinds well it will be challenging if not totally impossible the previous kind is mostly called a meditation for some reason people call it meditation which uh, is a uh, probably a bad translation of attention exercises so you can call it meditation but keep in mind that it is about attention practices there can be hundreds of meditations of such kind now we are going to add something in the normal attention practice which is not present in any other path and is very typical in the path of knowledge which is contemplation this is also called meditation for some reason contemplation or introspecting is paying attention to a teaching to a question to a topic in philosophy or trying to arrive at an answer using your direct experience and logic this is a must if you want to verify the teachings if you want to verify your experiences if you want to know know the truth about some topics and here you should have an attitude of questioning a doubtful attitude and skepticism you need to put a question mark on every thought that comes in your mind you need to explore the meanings of every word that you are writing or thinking about you can do this contemplation aloud like talking you can use uh, your friends you can do it as a team or you can uh, do it with your teacher brainstorming is one such uh, exercise and don't let go of the topic till you get a satisfactory answer your attention must be focused totally on that question or the topic so i am adding this as something which is specific to in the path of knowledge so what to do then should i focus on objects or should i do contemplation well my recommendation is you do both first to start with uh, objects of attention the three kinds and once you're finished with that 
you are very confident that now my attention is very sharp and well directed you direct it towards the topic of interest which will be completely in the layer of intellect so it is a difficult art but you need to start somewhere take a very light topic and start on it and i have seen that writing it down helps a lot define your words very very precisely while writing it down and use the seven kinds of questions to explore the topic you need to know the meaning of each word totally thoroughly and it should make complete logical sense it should be completely rational and it will be completely rational and closer to truth if you are paying attention to your direct experience of that topic so you will not find this thing in any other path now the question comes when to do all these practices it sounds like a lot so i suggest that you take a gradual approach don't try to do everything today you start with small don't put everything in your plate it should be bite size take that which you can digest i am suggesting a schedule for attention practices here you can change it according to your needs this is one example of the schedule that in posture you start in the morning 2 hours after rising from the bed or if you don't get time in the morning you can do it 1 hour or 2 hours before bed time before sleeping do not start uh, your attention practices just after getting out of the bed because you will be drowsy and that tension is kind of not so strong and don't do it just before bed time oh i have 5 minutes before sleeping and you try to sit there and you will notice that you fall asleep within 2 minutes so allow some margin there there are specific reasons to do the attention practices just before sleeping but they are concerned with other practices in other states in the first month you only do it for 5 minutes in the next 3 months you increase the duration to 10 minutes in the next 6 months you do it for 15 minutes and after that you do it for 20 minutes and if you think that this is only for kids this is too little so you can adjust the duration according to your will according to your ability but this is the bare minimum that i'm proposing here you go less than this and you will find that you are not progressing much and then in daily life you need to apply whatever you have learned otherwise there is no point in sitting in posture it is totally useless in the first month you should deliberately attend to the events in the daily life at least for 1 hour next 3 months increase it to 3 hours next 6 months increase it to 6 hours and after that you increase it to 12 hours per day you should be attentive for 12 hours in your day which is almost whole of your waking state so when you are starting you can take out 1 hour at least from your daily schedule for example you go to office and you travel it takes 1 hour and decide that i am going to pay attention to all the objects that i encounter in this one hour objects people the body and whatever is going on in the mind you attend to it you will slip your attention will fall it will get distracted misdirected but you remember to bring it back and then continue take the total of your attention span to one hour and then relax and go about your life normally you will find that the habit will take over and you will start paying attention to the other events in your day we are hacking the layers here once you give them something to do with they keep doing it and you will find there is a pleasure in attending now you don't like inattentive attitude at all you are automatically paying attention to everything especially if it is important your driving is in total attention your talking is in total attention and so on if you work in a factory you are attending to your work completely and now you're finishing it off quickly you will start seeing the effects of attention in your life and this is how it can be naturally increased to many hours per day if you think that it is a struggle i am not able to do this attention thing then decrease the duration do it only for 1 minute see what happens see if it brings the joy and so on so in the next uh, part we are going to add one more dimension to that tension 
which is awareness.